When you are flying into Haiti, if you have the opportunity to look out the window as you come in, the image of this country that was broken apart and destroyed and had the core, the heart of it, exposed to the entire world is just this heartbreaking, brutally honest image that remains with you for a very, very long time. And what I find is that that image well, it does expose some of the broken skin of the country, it does not do justice to the people that live here. Eleanor is a very open, warm, full of possibilities priest who has warmth for his people, for, for all people. He is, he is just there um, for Haitians and, and for improving their lives and wanting so much for them. So the people are here are very poor. So we felt uh, partnership uh, uh, Kids can go, cannot go to school. They go to school with uh, the support that we receive from Milwaukee. So the mission, my mission here is very difficult because. Uh, if I don't uh, receive some money from partners, we, can, we cannot continue to, to keep the school, to pay the teacher. Because uh, we received uh, 2,000 US dollars uh, each month from Milwaukee, uh, from each uh, We give uh, them, it, it is not enough. Because uh, we have about uh, 600 students here, so we cannot fill them with uh, 2,000 US dollars. Because each month we have 20 days of school, so with uh, 2,000 US dollars, we are we are able to give them uh, about 10 days. School. So we have uh, 
10 days they don't have food. Mm -hmm. So we give them rice, beans, uh, vegetable food sometimes, and meat. Uh, I would like to have a farmer here for, for that will help uh, with uh, reforestation too. Uh, if uh, we have a farm, a farm here, the kids can have the trees to, to plant. Uh, that will help uh, with uh, reforestation because we need to reforest uh, the land. Uh, yeah. I would like uh, with uh, it depends that the support that I will receive. I would like a uh, planet of man that will be a nice place uh, where people can, can come, stay, play and safe too. My job was, um, I guess, it was to get enough supplies to make us approximately have what we needed to construct it. And as it turned out, the original plans just all were kind of blown up because the size of the lumber was different than what we thought we were going to get. And it was pure happenstance that we happened to have enough fasteners of the right size to complete what we ended up completing. It was very, very, very fortunate. Finished products were awesome. I was just like, we 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 made two soccer goals that weren't even in the original plan. It was just an adjustment to what some of the Haitians asked for. We threw those in. We put up way more swings than I had anticipated us putting up. And uh, the, the baby swings that, that you made were just awesome because you know it's like it was exactly what they needed, and it was it was designed to be safe and, and it was colorful. It was just really great. Um, we, Ellen did the, brought in some paints to kind of hand decorate the, the projects and it made them look really, really good. So, I mean, I thought we were going to get half of what was in the original project plan done and we ended up getting like two thirds more done than I than was originally planned for. One of the skills I feel like I bring to Haiti is my skill as a nurse. This year when I returned, Père Lenore had really put the word out, and so when I walked to the clinic on Thursday, uh, as far as I could see, there were people waiting. Um, uh, crying children, adults, every bench was filled with children and families. And as I went into the clinic, I was praying that I would have the knowledge and the skill to bring, because I had no idea what I was stepping into. Nothing was set up, there's no running water, there's nothing really recognizable in terms of the way we would typically do things at home. So it took some time to kind of gather supplies, set up a treatment area, and then one by one um, identify with a translator what the problem was and what was available to help with the problem. To be in church in Jeanette is really, really, really wonderful. My, my, my wish was to have the hymnal so that I could have actually read the words. Um, so if I could give a gift to them, it would be to give, to, to give hymnals for everyone. Church service was uh, incredible. The uh, 
the, bit, the section in the service that really uh, hit home for me was uh, when I go to church on Sundays at St. Michael's, one of the things that I always notice is as we complete the, uh, the prayers for the people, there's always an opportunity for people to try and uh, give their own separate or individual prayers, and usually you don't really hear very many of those. You don't, or they're, if they're said, they're said very, very quietly. Uh, in the service at uh, St. Mark's, what I noticed at the conclusion of the prayers of the people was just an outpouring of uh, prayers and, uh, and almost a highly emotional experience that would be reminiscent of something you might see in some sort of a revival service. It was really, really impressive and went on uh, for a good 10 or 15 minutes and uh, frankly something that I know I'll never really forget. And uh, every time we have that prayer in church, I'll always remember the people of St. Mark's and uh, how they uh, respond. people like us and you put us in this kind of environment it's only natural that unbelievable things are gonna happen and when you look back and review this trip you see the unbelievable difference we've made in people's lives and though it's not a huge difference it's a difference and that is so much in itself when you like look at these pictures and these videos you can see the joy that you're bringing these people you can see the smiles spreading across their faces, and that just warms your heart. And it's a feeling that you can't explain. There's no other way to describe it. It's just, it's the best. And that's the reason why I know I want to continue to do these mission trips, and I know I want to go back to Haiti. Because it's not only giving of yourself, but it's also interacting with others. And that's the real magical part about these trips. To see us all come together and working with our various skills and trying and doing and um, making things happen out of whatever materials we had and just making it happen, I mean, that was magical. Just magical. I think we're, our, our synergy was amazing. I think we wrote blessed from above and we just took that energy and went with it. It was great. I feel like as a team, we forged friendships and a camaraderie that surpassed anything I could have ever imagined in terms of working together as a team, um, using each other's resources, and coming together um, in a way that I would have never imagined as a workforce. Seeing the children play and laugh on the equipment that we made, uh, that was just really fun to watch and to see people who are more or less adults swinging for the first time and just enjoying it with just you know, pure joy. We really did give the community something, whether it was the friendship, the playground, the um, skills of how to do things and build things, um, but I felt like it was not something that we pressed upon them, but they were part of the process. And I really do think this is an amazing volunteer opportunity.